Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our webinar tonight, sponsored by Open to Hope and the Compassionate Friends, and it is on finding hope during the holidays. And we're going to talk tonight about uh, our new normal and uh, survival tips for those that are grieving during the holidays. My name is Alan Peterson, and I'm the Executive Director of the Compassionate Friends. And as always, it is my honor and privilege to um, host these webinars with some very special people. And uh, tonight, um, Dr. Gloria Horsley, uh, who regularly hosts these with me, is here tonight. And we have a special guest, guest uh, a guru in grief, uh, Mr. Mitch Carmody, who will be joining us. And we'll all be sharing ideas, uh, but also hearing your ideas and answering your questions. This is a difficult time of year. For many of us in grief, uh, you know, people ask the question, do we grieve harder during the holidays? Do we grieve more? Uh, and my answer to that is generally I think we grieve the same all the time, but the holidays bring a lot of triggers and a lot of things that make us confront our, our grief and, um, and, and can be painful for many of us. And, and for some of us, yet we can find joy. But I first want to mention that uh, Open to Hope and the Compassionate Friends Partner to bring these webinars to you. And Open to Hope is the largest uh, resource for grief information for all types of loss in the world. And you can find them at opentohope.com. And we are just so honored as the Compassionate Friends. Uh, we're the largest grief organization uh, in the world for families who lost a child, grandchild, or a sibling at any age from any cause. And uh, we have over 700 chapters around the United States, and we have tons of online support and resources and Facebook pages, and you can find us at um, CompassionateFriends.org. So first, let me welcome in my co-host who, uh, boy, she's done a lot of radio and television and webinar and helped so many people in grief. Uh, what an honor to be here with you tonight, Dr. Gloria Horsley. How are you doing? Hey, Alan. Great. I'm so happy to be on, and I'm happy to be on with you and our buddy Mitch Carmendy. Hi, Mitch. Hey, how you doing, Gloria? Great to be here. Great. Well, you know, the holidays, as Alan said, are a really bittersweet time and really tough. Uh, I was just at Compassionate Friends at our chapter, and I heard some words that I thought were really interesting, and that was several people said they really have they've had a loss and they're scared. So I'm hoping that we can talk about some of those issues that you might be scared about today, about the holidays, and some uh, ideas that you have. It's a, a bittersweet time, and uh, they bring back memories of our loved ones. How about those uh, songs and smells and everything, Alan and Mitch? Uh, those triggers, I mean, there are triggers out there to get us I mean, year-round. But when the holidays, it, I mean, it, it, it's intense. It's in high def. I mean, everything is lit up in songs and the smells, the people cooking. And, and, and to the newly bereaved, uh, it really, it, especially if they've not, if they're still in the early years of their, or the early year of their last, that first year, don't know what to expect. Uh, down the road, we know what to expect a little bit. It helps somewhat to know what's going to happen. But that first year is difficult. I was speaking at a senior center the other night uh, about getting through the holidays, and, and so many of our baby boomers now are losing their husbands and their wives and, 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 and siblings, and um, they just don't know what to do. Do I send cards like I used to? You know, and they have all these questions. What, you, do I do it like I did before, or do I you know, just buck it up and go through it? You said something, Gloria, that, you know, and we've done a lot of holiday programs together, you and I, uh, but you said, you know, that people are scared, and, and, that's, that's, and that's really true. And, you know, when we think about grieving the death of someone we love, you know, we, people get grief at its most elementary state, you know, that we miss our loved one. They're not going to be here. But there's another grief involved with the holidays uh, that we don't talk about enough, and that is that we're taking for many of us a time of year that was so joy-filled and that we had always such anticipation about how, you know, how it was going to be and such fond memories. And now it becomes something that we fear and dread, actually. We look at now at that time of year. So we're also grieving the loss of that time of year. It's its own grief in itself. It's what, you, Mitch, you call collateral uh, losses that go with grief. And um, I don't think we often give that enough um, 
credence to how we're feeling either. Absolutely. Well, also, there's a fact that some people did not never enjoyed the holidays, and they've yeah. had a loss, and now they're supposed to enjoy them, or they are really confused, or holidays weren't their favorite. Uh, you know, holidays aren't the favorite for everybody in the world. There's some people who don't enjoy them much for many reasons, but don't expect of yourself that you are now going to love them if you didn't love them before, and don't expect that over time you're not going to get back to a level where you do love them if you did love them before. But I want to take this question because I think this is going to get us into our next area which is holiday survival tips. And uh, this is uh, someone who's uh, texted, it's only the second Christmas since losing our son. I struggle with attending social events around the holidays. Is it better to simply decline or at some point is it healthy to try to attend? knowing that you may need to excuse yourself early if emotions are running too high. Which is best? Well, the answer to that would be um, it all depends on who you are. And I think one thing that's really important up front before any question ever gets asked is we are all different. Some people actually find comfort in keeping uh, traditions and things like that, and others absolutely need to make new traditions or they can't do their old traditions. So I don't think that it's best either way. What's best is for you to figure out what you believe you can handle. And, you know, Gloria, you have a way, and I'll let you talk about, about how we can politely deal with people who invite us to things. We don't want to be rude. If people want an RSVP, we, you know, we want to say we're going to be there or not going to be there. But the, the best way is the way that you think you can handle it. And some of us can handle more than others. So my first thought to people is to devise a strategy. Do is, do is it best for me this year that I just avoid holiday parties? Or are there certain things I can or can't do? But develop a strategy and be true to yourself. Trust your own instincts and your own grieving style. And be the CEO of your grief. And Mitch, you kind of agree with that too, don't you? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I think, it, above all, it's being uh, really be authentic to yourself and be honest. Be honest with your family and be honest with your friends and, and ask for their assistance. What do you think I should do? And, and maybe they can come up, no, I, you know, maybe you should come to Christmas, but if you don't feel like it, give them the opportunity to take pressure off our own heart on the decision to make. And I think that helps. And it also helps to find a, a, a bereaved parent or a bereaved sibling, someone that has been through the journey to accompany you to maybe a family function and that'll break the ice big time when you come into a room and then someone else, you know because the topic is going to come up and but you have strength you know someone beside you there to be able to to get through that okay now I'm, now Heidi's not here today and I'm gonna throw one in the problem can be we're talking about how you feel but what about your other family members what about your kids particularly Heidi would say you know, I deserve to have a happy holiday as a sibling, if I've lost the sibling. You know, I don't want to have to give up uh, these things because of my lost sibling. What about me? And I think that's an important issue, too. You know, you can have other family members take your children to Santa Claus or whatever because you don't want to do it doesn't mean that you can't have other family members. Get people to come in. Get friends to come in and so that it can be a, a happy holiday for your kids. Yeah, oh, definitely. Absolutely. The dynamics of the family, uh, on the age of the children, if you have young children who believe, still believe in Santa Claus and it's everything to them, that, 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 then we kind of, you know, you fake it till you make it sometime. I had to do that for my daughter. My son died December 1st, and we had to have Christmas 24 days later. It was awful to, to pretend. Um, and, and we didn't have a home. We, we didn't set up Christmas. He was dying in our home. So we, we brought someone else's house that had a, a beautiful, that let us use their home, set up for Christmas. And, and we celebrated for Christmas. And, and it was not easy, but we did it for our daughter who was six years old, who so needed Christmas. Now, 29 years later, now we have grandchildren and, and we're absorbed into the Christmas spirit again. And but for many years, uh, we just didn't, uh, you know, we just went through the motions and told people. Uh, that you know, excuse us if we leave early, or you know, but this is not. It's just still five years down the road, and still letting people know, no, this is still a long-term journey. Right. Well, let's go into some survival tips. Try not to to overdo it. Is um, you know, I think that is just uh, that's just good advice. 
reach out to others for help. I always, um, you know, you know, I know we we talk about help during the holidays, but one of the most healing things or or helpful things that most people will tell you who have gone through um, many years of holidays is yes, reach out to others for help. Like you said, maybe you you personally don't think you can attend an event, but it's important um, to to let your children or somebody else do it. But maybe somebody's willing to go Christmas shopping for you or holiday shopping for you because it's too painful for you to go to the mall. Reach out and ask others for help, but I always say that help is two-sided. Reach out and help others too because it is amazing, um, and I use this example all the time, that early on I got hooked up with a group who found, uh, when my daughter Ashley died that first uh, couple of Christmases, who found uh, a child, a, a girl, who didn't have a dad to get a gift from. And they found me, a dad, who didn't have a daughter to buy a gift for. And it was a very healing experience to know that I was doing that. So, yes, reach out uh, to others to help you. Let them know what you need. Don't make people try to anticipate what you need because they don't know what to do. And But also uh, reaching out and helping others. Mitch, you want to take the next couple? Yes, um, you know, they're reminding yourself the actual holiday, you know, the anticipation of that day coming up. And I think most of us agree that it's been on the journey for a while that those days prior, I mean, I'm getting emails now from, from bereaved, early bereaved and local people calling and, and you know, I can't, I can't get through this. I don't know how I'm going to get through these days. And, and the anticipation is, 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 can be worse than the actual, the actual, when the day gets there, you go, wow, it's not as bad as I really thought it was. And so it's important to remember that, you know, the anticipation is, <laughs> it's not going to be that bad. Uh, it, can't, it could be, but more than likely, it'll be less than you really thought it would be. Absolutely. And just to have hope of that. Okay, thanks, Mitch and Alan. We've got another question here, another thought. Uh, this person says, I was not a holiday person, and I think uh, they became a holiday person due to uh, having a child that enjoyed the holiday, but they lost uh, their child six weeks ago, and she says, she was our joy, and now I'm back to an empty Christmas feeling. We're planning to have a Christmas party at our house. Oh my gosh, she only died six weeks ago, and they're going to have a Christmas party at their house. God bless you. And then she says, but I feel like we are doing it to fool everyone into believing we're okay. I'm afraid to see the kids playing. Is that awful of me? Oh, my goodness. Wow. Six weeks. Oh. It's only been six weeks for you. And I would say to you, uh, you're going to have a Christmas party. You better figure out how to get a lot of help for that party. And you also need to have the opportunity to bail out if you need to. If you need to leave for a few minutes, you need to tell some trusted people that if you disappear from the party, you may need a moment, you know, to go up into your room or bathrooms are a great place. Uh, I call it getting a hall pass. Remember in school when you got a hall pass? Well, yeah. yes. for very particularly right. six weeks ago, you deserve a hall pass. So, um, have, have a yeah. plan. <laughs> yeah, have a plan. Yeah what you can do to leave. I want to address that last uh, comment of, of the question because it was really good, you know, and, and I feel bad if I, if I see children playing. Is, is there something wrong with that? And you know what? That is, that is normal and, and, and natural. And, you know, they're, um, you know my, I lost my only daughter, Ashley, and I'll give you an example of it. Um, and, and early on, uh, certainly I, I could have never – put together a holiday party six weeks after she died and and um, I agree with everything Gloria is saying but but not long after Ashley died I was at a hotel and I was down at the pool and I saw a father and a daughter in the pool and I could have got up and left but for some reason I just kept watching and it and it and it just reminded me of everything I lost and I looked at that and stared at it and and, and I came to the conclusion that while I'm very happy for that dad, that all it, it's putting into clear focus all that I've lost. And so when you see the, the children playing and, and, and you feel bad, it's because it is a reminder of what you feel like you've lost. And early on in grief, that's all you really see. 
That's what your main focus is, is what you have lost. And so rather than looking at it as feeling good or feeling bad about it, it's just grief. That's what grief is. You are longing when you see children playing. It's longing for the love and for what you have lost. And that's not a good or a bad thing. That just is grief. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think six weeks. When you're six weeks out, that um, you're, you're probably maybe still in shock. And and I know some people that would take that time and and use Christmas as a focus. You know, I'm still I, I I can do this. This will get me through it. I've got a lot of plans to make, and I want to do this. Where maybe uh, half a year out, you may, you would know. I no way could I do this. So you know, it's up to, up to the person. Everybody grieves differently. And if you're a rabbit and you're one of those rare people, you get a lot of things done. And maybe this is an opportunity to to focus, on, you know, on the grief with Christmas. You know, so you can one rid the grief too, and really run away from it. When we say Christmas, let me say Christmas slash Hanukkah slash Kwanzaa, uh, whatever Absolutely. holiday we celebrate this year. Okay, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then I and I and these are, are are great tips, and they apply to any anniversary dates or birth dates. And uh, well, first of all, yeah, like um, I can show you not how, how to not do it because exercise. Of course, now we know uh, what we didn't always know, but exercise can be a great way of helping you sweat out, uh, you know, things that you know maybe you can only cry so much and. And so exercise is good. These are things I did not do. Getting enough sleep is very important. And some people have difficulty sleeping. And sometimes you do need to, to see your medical doctor to, to get some help to, to get yeah, enough well, sleep. Well, I had to, that's, I'm not a pill taker, and I had to take a sleeping pill eventually because yeah. I was so exhausted. And you know those antihistamines are not good for you. You're much better. They're, they're really some sleeping medication that won't wake you up with a hangover and that now there have been a lot of uh, good good medications come out but you got to get them through your doctor yeah and I, and I think that's important you know we uh, you got to take care of yourself and I think if there's one difference um, Mitch and, and Dr. Gloria and myself we're, we're all down the road our total years down the road would scare you all but we've seen and, and we've learned so much over the years about how important these things are. If we can't take care of ourselves, grief's hard enough. It's taxing enough. The trauma of it is enough. Uh, but if we can do the simple things, and uh, you know, like drinking water, making sure we're drinking plenty of water in there, exercising, getting some sleep, uh, eating, even though you may not feel like it, trying to eat as healthy as you can. If we can do those things, we can help ourselves, give ourselves a bit of an edge. Mm-hmm so that we have the stamina and we have the um, ability to, to, to face the grief. Mitch, you want to take the, the other uh, three? Yes, because I think the, the whole self-care uh, is, is really overlooked. That we do, And breathing, breathing number one. You know, when people say we're upset, go for a walk. You know, a walk, it, it, it not only exercises, but you start to breathe better when you're walking. You start to breathe in and to have intention when you're breathing. Breathing in relaxation, breathing out tension. Use it as a walking meditation. Um, because when we're hypoxic, when we're in depression or we're sad, we don't breathe as well. It's so important. And then the whole effect of bilateral stimulation. When you go for a walk, you're looking around um, and like with the basis of EMDR, you know, it's just, it's kind of a settling thing to go for a walk, and I think it's uh, really important. If you have, if you're, you can't get out in the cold like Minnesota, you, then you go to the mall and, and walk, and it may be difficult saying the Christmas, but, um, you know, you, it, it's worth the risk sometimes. We've been hurt before. It's, it's take, take the risk and take care of yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, like, and, you know, you're worth it, too. <clears throat> I mean, there's some... Yeah, like, Something well, like that makes Gloria, a game for, for taking care of ourselves. That's right. Like Dr. Glory is going to get a massage after this <laughs> webinar. That is yeah. a, it is, it, in grief, I will tell you, that is a healing uh, thing to do for yourself. If you can do that, to, to have a massage and to take care of yourself, um, all those things help you uh, help yourself going through grief. And we know that uh, from, from our own experience, negative and positive, and what we learn from so many others. And you can actually get sick from grief. I mean, there's even something yeah. called the broken heart syndrome. You can actually die from grief. 
and you know there's no you know what point someone said to me you know their child died of a drug overdose and I said yeah drug took your drugs took your children's life don't let it take yours don't let the automobile accident that killed your child take your life or cancer or whatever you know you your child would want you to take care of yourself and your sibling and your grandchild absolutely it's, and it's not only going outside, it's, it's going inside. Like we go for a walk, that's going outside. But we need to find a quiet time for ourselves, at least 20 minutes a day where you can just find some quiet time, meditate or prayer or find a spot where you can just, you know, take yourself off the planet for 20 minutes. And you might even want to journal. Every, everybody has some way that they want to do it. Well, um, let us take a question. I just got a question. Uh, from a woman who said that her child died in a single car accident. It, she said it's been a while, it's been almost seven years, but she said, I want to bring him up in conversation during the holidays. He was 18 and she has other children and she said, I don't know how to bring my kids up in conversation. I want so badly to talk about Gregory, her son, and he would have loved decorating the tree, wrapping presents, drinking coffee, and all those things. I love that she has a memory of him that he would have loved it. I was given this advice early on. I love that question um, because um, early on, we, we do have to sometimes train the people around us how to treat us. Now, you're down the road a few years, and I understand that that first holiday season, my first Ashley died in August, so our first family gathering was actually Thanksgiving. And at the Thanksgiving gathering, they sat an empty chair and they put a place place setting there. And I was right across from it, and I was staring at it in honor of Ashley. And you know, she was remembered that year. Uh, it, it was horrible, though. I remember it just being horrible with that empty chair there. But as the years went by, you know, people tend to not say their name or talk about them. So I was given advice early on, and I recommend this to you uh, who was asking this question. I would tell people, here's the deal. Um, don't invite me to any event. I don't care what it is unless Ashley is invited as well. And I literally said, I cannot come to your event and pretend that I am not the uh, father uh, whose daughter died in an automobile accident. So what that means is that doesn't mean that it has to be the focus of attention, but I need to talk about Ashley, and I need to hear stories about Ashley. And I've given that advice out to thousands and thousands of people over the years, and I've been amazed at how many people have come back to me and said, oh, my God, that has really worked for me. And so you just have to let people know that, you know, even if it's, there's been some holidays where people haven't said the name, uh, Heidi always says something if she was on the broadcast tonight she would be saying this too you know have a toast even if we do something as, as to have a toast to Ashley or to whatever or to you know have people tell you a story that you might not know but what I would say to my family is look over the last couple of years we haven't talked about our son our daughter my brother my sister whatever but you know what it's very important to me that they be included in the holiday and talk with them about ways and how it's important to you and that you can't participate in holidays unless all of your children or all of your brothers and sisters are included. And that, that includes the ones that are here with us and the ones that are, that are not here with us physically. Those are my thoughts. Yeah. Mitch, what do you have? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think it's important to, uh, to, to prepare and, and bring along some stories, the um, the good, the life story, not the death story. I mean, I know our family has heard it many times more than they can bear, but bring the life story. Talk about Christmas past. Talk about the things that, the funny things that happened at other Christmases, or remember when Grandma fell down the stairs, whatever. You know, you talk about things that the whole family knew, and that's maybe not funny, but you talk about the things that happened, and then, then, Everybody can talk about their children, whether they're living or they have died. We can still talk about the, about the, the, the life story and the good things and the fun things that they did. And we used to go to the nursing home and sing Christmas carols when they were small. And, yeah, and that'll, that'll open it up and let people feel comfortable. Uh, and you what know, do you say, Mitch? Well, Mitch, you say something all the time. You say our, that our loved ones and our children and brothers and sisters die a 
second death when second. we don't keep them in the present tense and say their name. And, uh, and that's right. true. It, it's important for us because sometimes we get we get so irritated or scared of what people are going to say, and we're the one who brought the elephant in the room with us. You know, so right. we let them know there's, there's an elephant in the room. I brought it in here. I want to talk about it, and talking about it is talking about my son and the and the parties we had before. We were caroling, the sledding. Remember when we went sledding that year and how cold it was, and normalize it for people. Let them feel comfortable. They can talk about everybody in the family, living or dead. We talk about grandpa. Let's. Why not talk about the early, the early the, the children who have died? We talk about our older relatives, but let's be it all inclusive and normalize it. It's part of our life, the rest of our life, and and we have to educate our family. I wanted to say something about the toast because what I'm thinking about is, say, somebody whose child died this year or six weeks ago or whatever. Um, Heidi always says, you know, the toast is so important that you say, could we give a toast to uh, Jamie or whatever, my, the child that died, but also to all the living children that are here. Uh, that's right. important to include the, the living children in that, but also get a safe person in your family in that first year to initiate the toast or initiate yeah talking about someone so you don't have to do it. I know it's an emotional time for you to do it. And we've got a question here that I, I really think fits into what we're talking about right now. And the person asks, how to ex do you explain to the family you are not feeling well enough to attend a party or whatever? I wanna say something about this first and you, then you guys can say something. We did not go to a very important high profile wedding in our family six weeks after Scott died. That family member who initiated, you know, was having the event, it has been years and I don't think they've ever forgiven us for that event. Wow. They love us and we're close to us, but they will never forget that we didn't go to that. And you know what? It's too bad. We couldn't go. So sometimes you just can't go. And as I said on this first thing there, let people know as early as possible if you'll not be going. They're gonna be mad. They're not gonna like it. They're gonna you want you to be who you were. You're not. It's tough. That's the way it goes. Some people will understand, some people won't understand, some people won't forget it. It's it's just the way it is. Well, I agree with you, uh, Gloria. It it's um you know, you know, people look at us today and 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 all that we do and uh but we 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 had a difficult first few years in our in our holiday grieving uh and and so we also know from experience i could not go to certain holiday events and it took a time for people to forgive me and to understand that but if i had to go back and do it again i would do it the same way uh not everybody is going to understand and thank goodness they don't because they would have to be experiencing what we are experiencing, the loss that we are experiencing. So you try to be as polite as possible. And I always love what, what you say. I always tell people this, <clears throat> you know, early on in the holidays, if people ask you and they need an RSVP, what I would, would tell people is, look, I can give you a definite maybe. If you're going to order a, you know, I a like catered that. dinner, <laughs> yeah, I always tell them, I say, if you're going to order a catered dinner, um, <laughs> That, you know, don't don't do that for me because what happens to us is when we're grieving and like we said, there's anxiety during the season. Sometimes the day isn't as bad as the anxiety. But if I wake up on December, you know, fifth, and I'm feeling okay, I might think to myself, well, you know, I can go to that that party on December seventeenth. But the truth is, we don't know how we're going to feel on December seventeenth. And we have to let people know that. We don't know whether it's going to be a good day or a bad day. And then when you do show up, and I know we repeat this again and again, but I can't tell you how important it is, have an exit strategy. If you can, drive yourself. Don't go with the group so that you get stuck. I tell people, and, you know, people chuckle, but it's really the truth, is there were several events that I went to in my early years uh, during the holiday seasons where, uh, I had diarrhea. I didn't really, but I just told them I had diarrhea. And I said, you'd be amazed how quickly people will excuse you from their party, especially if they only have one bathroom. And uh, that's just what I used. That was my go-to. I'm sorry, but I had to get out of there. And uh, so we don't want to ruin people's 
holidays. You know, grief is painful enough. We don't want to spoil their party. So, you know, be honest with people and let them know that sometimes I don't know whether I can attend. And I may not know until an hour, 15 minutes before your event. If you'll give me that flexibility, then you know what? Put me down as a definite maybe. And that way you are being fair and honest with with people, but you're also taking care of yourself. I lost my son almost six months ago. I find myself very emotional now. Get those guys, six months ago. Does anybody else feel this way? I feel so broken and I'm crying a lot. Wow. wow. Go ahead. No, that, <laughs> uh, to normalize that, that's very, I mean, yes. I mean, the first couple of years we could be crying like that a lot. and. Uh, I think she's trying to think that she'd be a lot further, or maybe people are encouraging her to be a lot further along at this point. But uh, wow, I th I'd say that she is, you know, it, and it's so important to cry. It's important to let those tears out. We talked earlier about the body, mind, the health, and to, those levels of cortisol in our system is huge. And, and Christmas can be, a, or the holidays can be a time to really to shed those tears and let that let people show how you're feeling. We talk keep talking about being honest but being authentic and, and I know some people have even sent letters out ahead of time to people and just say you know just know that I'm taking this one day at a time and I may or may not attend there's no reflection on a relationship and if you lose some like you did Gloria it's collateral damage in our grief sometimes that happens yep absolutely yeah, I, I, I want to say to the person that wrote that question first of all what a beautiful question um, and um, and it, and it really is why support is so important. And, and first of all, the fact that you're um, watching and listening to this webinar tonight um, is, is a good thing, and I'm glad you're on here listening. Uh, at six months, you know, your tears, they come. And I know that, that, that there, we don't control it. It's just these grief waves hit us. And, and that is normal, and that is natural. In time, grief edges are going to soften, but that time isn't right now. And those tears are going to come when they come. In time, you're going to learn that the tears are the tribute. Our tears are our tribute. The tears are the love. And, and, and they won't be controlling you so much. But what I would really suggest to you is to, as much as you can, keep yourself around people who understand your loss, somebody who, who, who can identify with your loss. That's why the compassionate friends and open to hope are so important. They keep you connected to people who understand that you are not crazy. You're not doing anything uh, that's out of the normal. And, and, and uh, at the top of the show, we talked about this new normal. In this new normal that you have at six months, you can, you can cry on a dime. I'll tell you soon, you're going to learn how you can cry and laugh at the same time. Nothing crazy about it. You're not crazy. There's nothing wrong with you. You are grieving, and as you should be grieving. And so uh, I'm glad that you asked that question. And I'm glad you're here tonight, and I hope that you uh, hear a lot of things that, that make you feel supported and validate what you're going through. Uh, so, uh, someone else has just written and said, I'm in early grief and I can't do happy, quote, happy memories yet. And everyone keeps asking me, what's wrong? Don't they know? Uh, it's a difficult happy memories to, to end, end, the, end telling the story at the same time. It's, uh, it's, it's tough. <laughs> it's, grief is hard work. Um, but once I think once we open the door about making some happy memories and, and of that you know we've made happy memories in the past and let's let's set some intentions for uh, some happy memories this year and be surprised at the outcome. Maybe just a, a couple or even one. You know, everyone keeps asking me what's wrong. Don't they know? I want to tell you uh, when my son was killed. I worked at the University of Rochester. I was psychiatric consultant to the surgical service. I worked with many many families who had had children die, and until it happened to me, I had no idea. I mean, don't believe right. that people can know your grief. It is profound. Yeah, we're never going to convince them. I always say that people tend to understand grief and loss to the level they mm. have experienced, experienced it. it. Yeah. And um, that's why, and, and again, I go back, you know, not to beat that dead horse, but Support is so important from others who, who do understand it. 
because uh, we we get what's wrong. What's wrong? Uh, that new and greet. Everything's wrong. Everything is wrong. Everything's upside down. Everything that you know we used to believe we we don't we don't necessarily believe. Uh, our hearts are broken, and we have no idea how to even begin to put the pieces back together. What's mm-hmm. wrong? Everything's wrong. But but it it takes others who uh, who understand the grieving process who've experienced a loss to be able to validate us. And we need a lot of validation uh, when we're going through grief. We need as much validation as we could possibly get. And that oftentimes can only come from somebody who has experienced it and walked that journey, um, you know, who who can understand. Uh, This person says, I cry constantly too, but people push you to be okay. What about these people that are pushing you to be okay, guys? Well, I, I have a, you know, first thing, and, you know, we probably could have set it up front, is, you know, warning, people around you are going to say and do a lot of stupid things, and they are in grief in general, and they're especially going to, um, uh, to do it during the holidays. And I think our pain is too much for people. Uh, and like you said, Gloria, I, you know, I worked at, as a, a, a news reporter, a network news reporter, and one of the biggest stories I reported on uh, over 400 times was the Columbine High School a tragedy, and I knew those families well and the victims' families, and um, and I was an empath- I, I, I was a sympathetic, good person, good-hearted person back then, but only till I, till Ashley died could I fully understand what they would have been going through. And I wish I would have put my pencil down and my microphone down and I would have just asked them about their children and their brothers and their sisters and, and that, but people don't know what they don't know. And people push for us to be better than we are. But the, the the best thing that you can be for yourself during the holidays is authentic Mm -hmm. and uh, whatever that means for you. And so like Gloria said, it's so, so true. You, you, we're never going to be able to educate people what this feels like. And some people are, they're just hell bent that, you know what, I, my, I'm going to teach everybody what this feels like. You can't teach them what it feels like, but what you can do is educate them about what would be helpful to you. And the best question that, that, that people can ask of us when we're grieving is, is there something that I can do for you right now that would be helpful? So rather than, you know, pushing back on someone trying to make you be better than you are or whatever, just turn it right around and let them know what they could do for you right now that might be helpful. And it might just mean being quiet. Yeah, right. It might be quiet, but it may be something like setting up a tree or, you know, taking your grandkids out. Because here's a a person who says that – she has, I'm grieving the death of my son and I've adopted my son's son, my grandson. How do you grieve while trying to raise a happy child? That is tough. One of the things I want to say to you, Grandma, is make sure you get some people to come in and help with your grandson. Ask people to take yeah. him places. Ask people to do things with him. He deserves a happy time, but you've got to have some peace yeah. to grieve your right. grandma. Great advice. Call, call on those people that said, is there anything I can do? There's no time limit on that, on that love. Just call them, and, and, and this is the time that you need them. And share your emotions on how are you doing. I said, I'm doing. I'm having a terrible day. I really would need you to take, could you come out and help me go shopping? Just, whatever it is, just be authentic. It's, 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 it is, it's tough, but uh, we have to take the risk, I think. And, and for people that try to tell us to get over it, we have to kind of gently remind them that this is new to us, you know, uh, and it's new to them, uh, the new us. They want the old Mitch back, but he's not coming back. So we do have to educate them. And some people won't want the Mitch that's there now. Some people, I lost friends, and particularly kids yeah. lose friends too. There's some people that can't deal with the grief. And then sometimes they'll come back years later, and you have to decide whether or not you want them back in your life. You have to find safe people, and you'll meet new people who are great with grieving people that you can welcome into your life. You are grieving. I guess they're talking about an early grief. Uh, is depression part of grief, or is grief something different? And what's the difference between grief, knowing you're in grief, 
or being in depression? Well, uh, a lot of the signs are totally similar of grief and depression because you are depressed when you're in grief and there's and it real heavy is post-traumatic stress syndrome. If you look that up on the internet, you'll find that grieving people early on have a lot of those symptoms, not able to sleep, agitation, uh, rolling waves of grief, all the things that we, you know, we know. But depression over, you know, it, it really uh, with grief and depression, they're pretty similar. And after a period of time, six months to a year, if you are still not able to get out of bed or you're not able to do your daily living things, like you're not able to have a shower, you're not able to get dressed, you're not able to take care of yourself, then you really need to think about maybe you, to get some help, you're a little bit more depressed and down over time. But the symptoms are going to look very much the same in grief. I and heard that. Yeah. And, and Correct me if I'm wrong, Gloria, but isn't that the difference between if when you're uh, in grief and it's sometimes sad, overwhelming sadness is mixed diagnosis, depression, because uh, you seem to be depressed all the time, you're looking at albums, you're crying, but someone severely medically depressed uh, may not even open a photo album or, or, or talk about their loved one. All they, they're, they're really, I mean, not functional. Uh, where in grief we can still be functional in the grief depression um, we, we can be still functional and we're just pervasive sadness is that yeah yeah well we look at can you do activities of daily living that's the question right. people who right. become depressed are not able to do those activities and of course if I'm talking to somebody who doesn't want to live anymore and has a plan to take their life you certainly at any point need to get help with that. Now, that's not to say that people that say, I wish I could join them. Some people get confused about suicidal ideation and normal behavior. Normal grief says, I wish that I could join them. I'm sad. I wish it had been me. That's not yes. a, a suicidal ideation, but saying, I want to join them. And, and then you could ask them, what do you mean by that? And if they actually have pills or a gun or something, you want to take action immediately. But most of us do have those feelings that sometimes we wish that we weren't around and we wish you could join them. So I think finding a way to honor the memory of your loved one, there are many things that, 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 that people do. Um, and, you know, from sponsoring uh, a park bench to a donation, uh, if your child died, died of an illness, maybe a donation in their honor buying a gift for somebody else. The beautiful thing about honoring um, is that it gives us a chance to say their name, have their name seen, uh, said, and heard. And really that is the gift for us. And at some point we realize that the legacy of our loved ones is now in our hands and that we can find healing by continuing to have their name out there by what we do. And if you think about all the beautiful uh, scholarships and money that gets raised and the new wings to the hospital that get built and the there's small things and big things that are done because somebody lived, somebody died, and somebody who loved them decided that, you know what, I want to honor their life by doing something. And create a new ritual, I was going to say, that uh, in the holiday season that you didn't have before that honors your loved one. That, like, you know, on December 1st, now we cut the, our tree down every year um, in honor of Kelly. And on his, on his annual day, day, we cut the tree down. So that was a new ritual that we never had before. And to maintain, we did that for our daughter when she was young. Uh, so she could anticipate and look forward to Christmas. And now it has become a tradition in our family to still cut it down on December 1st. And and uh, and we always have escargot on Christmas for Kelly because he loves snails. I love that. Well, we've got another uh, question. When Alan was asking me about depression, uh, we have a question here from a uh, lady, obviously, who says that her husband is spending most of his time in bed and she's concerned about him and do we have any suggestions? Let's see. Oh, my daughter p uh, passed away six months ago. I'm doing everything I can to help myself with this. My husband has always suffered from depression and stays in bed all day and night more now. Any suggestions? Well, if he has a history of depression, 
you probably, I would assume he might have had some treatment. If he has, I think you probably want to get a hold of uh, your doctor or the person that's been working with him and see if there's any concern. If he's never had any treatment for depression, then you might want to consider getting some help, going to somebody yourself. Because I always say one of the very best things you can do if you're worried about a family member and you feel like they need to get some help is to go talk to the person, a helper yourself, a, a psychologist, right. go to a hospice center and they'll tell, and, you know, they'll give you people who specialize in grief and loss or ADAC Association of Death Educators have a list. If you go to their website, a therapist probably in your area who knows something about grief and loss, go in and talk to them about the situation. If you can't force somebody else to go uh, seek support or to see a therapist, go yourself. Learn as much as you can about the grieving process. I, you know, I always tell people, educate, educate yourself about grief and find support in grief and uh, you know there comes a point to where somebody if we're not a professional ourselves we don't know what's best for them and if they need support we need to learn as much as we can about grief so that we can support them as best we can but it's a very difficult situation to, to be in my heart goes out to that person absolutely Mitch you got any comments I have to mirror that too. That you, know, you can't. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. You can't if he's in bed every day, and that's what he's doing. Is you seek help and or some counseling, and when you come home, you, he'll see something different in you, and he it may intrigue him that wh what is going on with you? What? Uh, why are you seem to you know you seem a little bit better today? And 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 without pushing them, but just shining by example. You know, a lot of men won't won't, won't go to compassionate friends at the beginning. You know, uh, mm -hmm. until they see the change in their wife and say, wow. Oh, she's doing good. So maybe I'll go get some of that and see what see if it'll work for me. All right. Well, you know what? Um, the, uh, the book that Heidi and I uh, edited with inspirational stories is up, and uh, we hope that you will take a look at it and go to our site at opentohope.com. What is the best way to answer the question? How many ki How are the kids when oh. you have lost your firstborn and have one younger child? And they say. How are the kids? I think you'll be yeah. honest. And I had that question before when people ask me, or what do I sign on the card, or what do they say? Is that to, 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 to be honest with them? You know, missing our, our loved one, our child in heaven, and, and our other children are, are, are having a run, they're doing well. Just to, to be open and, uh, about what's, what they're experiencing. Yeah. You know, it's kind of hard. Uh, I can imagine myself, I'm Christmas shopping. And, and yeah. somebody comes up for the one child that hasn't died, and I'm trying to hold myself together, and somebody comes up and says, how are the kids? Oh. Yeah. Is, oh. I, I, I will tell you, you know, so, I, sometimes I lied, I, you know, and I'm going to be real honest with you. When <laughs> after Ashley had first died and not everybody knew about it, there were a couple of times where, you know, people would say, oh, so how are the kids? I'd say, well, you know, maybe you didn't hear my daughter Ashley died. And these were just very loose acquaintances. You know, my daughter mm -hmm. Ashley died a few weeks ago in a car accident. And the horrified look on their face. And, you know, I might have been out at wherever. Uh, and but what I learned is sometimes I would just say fine and move on. Because I, I didn't want to have to, to tell them. But I agree when you can, you know, you want to be honest. But not everybody... Uh, is entitled to that information. And not, right. and so Depends on the I, would, I, I began to be a little guarded about who I would just blurt that out to because, you know, I was so new in my grief that I didn't know whether I would, you know, start, you know, sobbing or wailing right there at the Home Depot or whether I could keep it together. So uh, you got to kind of handle that in your own way and use discretion, but not everybody has to know everything. If you're not ready to to tell it, so I'd say use right. your your instincts again. Your instincts and your choice at that moment, and just say you know. Sometimes you're gonna feel you're gonna feel differently. Another time you want to make other people feel bad that, that you're suffering, and you know, and you may tell them the whole story, or right. you may just say like you know, said, fine, I you know, I, and I don't go into it at all. I, I I guess it's safe to say it's okay to lie. It's not a lie. There's some self protection. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs>
Um, uh, oh, I thought this was sweet. I include my daughter's name on all the gift tags like this. Brooke put their child's name on the gifts. I think that's sweet. Um, that here's a question. Great. How long is too long uh, to keep our child's ashes on the shelf? When should we bury them or sprinkle them? When you are ready. No time limit. <laughs> That, no, again, another choice point. Yeah, I, mean, I wish I had not emptied all, sent all of my son's ashes to Hawaii because I mean, there's so many things that you can do with them now that they can, it's a legacy to their life and with jewelry and many other things. So keep them, share them with other family members. It's, uh, there's no time limit on that. I've seen, you know, Gloria, just like you and Mitch, we've met tens of thousands of grieving family members, and I know people who are 10 years down the road, whose child's room is in the exact state that it was the day they died. And, and so many people would think, well, holy cow, you know, uh, well, they're weird or they're just not working on their grief. These people are doing wonderful work uh, in, in grief. You know, I tell people, I, I went to Mount Vernon and paid a lot of money to go see George Washington's house just the way it was. It was pretty cool. And, uh, you know, so George Washington was a great person, and, and we remember him, and we go look at where he lived. Do what's right for you when it's right for you. And I think I said that up front, but I'll say it again. Be the CEO of your grief. And you know what? If it's right for you and you're getting through life, it's not interfering with your normal life activity, have that urn sitting there for the rest of your life if that's what you need and want to do. Uh, and the more that you, and when people ask you about your children, and you, I tell people I have three children. I have two sons, and I give their age, and I say, and I have a daughter, Ashley, who died in an automobile accident when she was 18. I have, I have, I have. The love never dies. It stays with us, and keep them present, and do it your way, period. Mitch, I do want to give you a chance because normally we put a slide up at the end, but you do a lot of wonderful work. You travel around the country and you speak. You're an author of Letters to My Son, a wonderful book. You're a terrific artist. Mitch, can you tell people, um, because it's not on a slide, how do they get a hold of you if they want you to come and speak for them or if they want to look at your artwork, uh, have you do a workshop? Tell people how they can get a hold of Mitch Carmody and learn more about you. I guess nowadays the easiest is to friend me on Facebook, and uh, you can get all my information. Or it's Heartlight Studios is the studio that I created after my son died, which is Heartlight Studios, at AOL, or at, um, uh, dot net or dot com, and just Facebook okay, friend me and yes, uh, yeah, Heartlight Studios plural dot com. Dot and net just, dot just com. Google my name and yeah, Google my, Google my name. You get all the information you need, and uh, I just want to help serve the bereaved wherever we can and. Uh, this is our this is our journey. We we need, need not walk alone, and we're here there here for you. I want I want to wish everybody out there a gentle holiday season, and um, our hearts go out to those of you. So many of you are new in grief who contributed tonight. Thank you not only for listening, but I hope that something that was said tonight will help you. Be gentle and kind. Take care of yourselves. We wish you a blessed holidays from uh, Open to Hope. Again, you find them at opentohope.com and the Compassionate Friends at CompassionateFriends.org. Uh, Heidi Horsley and Gloria Horsley like to say, if you can't find hope, lean on our hope until you can. There are so many resources, and if you find yourself in the middle of the night and you want to read about or connect with people uh, who are grieving and feeling what you're doing, go to either one of our sites, and you can read and watch and listen uh, um, and and communicate with people who understand your loss. So a blessed holidays to everybody. Dr. Gloria, thank you so much, as always, for all the hard work. Heather Horsley, thank you. We miss Dr. Heidi tonight and Mitch Carmody. Uh, thank you very much, and good night, everybody. Good night. God bless. God bless you all.